Okay, so in the first part of this video, you got a chance to hear the poem, We Real Cool, read first by the author, Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, a very popular African-American poet, and that poem, as it turns out, is uh, probably her most famous poem, uh, We Real Cool. And you also got a chance to hear the poem read a second time by a famous African-American author, uh, Morgan Freeman, um, who we see in the movies all the time. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to look through this poem and make sure that we understand all parts of it, uh, understand what the poem is trying to say, uh, and understand what the author is trying to say with the poem. And what we will want to do is you'll need a writing tool and a highlighting tool, something so that we can go through, uh, mark the poem up and find out all the important details uh, so that we can answer the questions in the uh, Do Now assignment for We Real Cool. So. Uh, let's begin by uh, rereading the first stanza. A stanza is a group of lines in a poem. There are a total of one, two, three, four, five stanzas. Our first stanza reads, uh, the pool players, seven at the golden shovel. Now, let's make sure we understand the what, what exactly that first stanza is trying to say. Uh, that first line uh, says, the pool players. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that line because it's very important, uh, probably the most important line in the poem. And let's talk about what it, it means. First off, um, if you look at the, the the image that is provided, that image is not created by Gwendolyn Brooks, but it's provided because it gives us some context about what um, the pool players is referring to. It's not referring to a pool in a sense of something we would swim in, but in terms of the game that involves sticks and, and shooting balls into, uh, into pockets. So the pool players is referring to the who. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the words who right here. And then I'm going to make an arrow so that we know exactly what it's referring to. Uh, the who is the pool player. So it's telling us uh, that this poem is about a group of pool players. The next line gives us more information about the pool players. It tells us who, or rather how many there are. So that second thing when it says seven, that first word of the next stanza, what that's actually doing is it's referring to uh, how many pool players there are. So I'm going to write how many and then I'm going to draw an arrow from the number to our note. Got to make sure when we highlight things, we understand what it's referring to. And then I'm going to go a little step further and I'm going to change the color of that highlight because it's a little bit different from the other highlight. Okay, so we are talking about pool players. We're talking about the number of pool players uh, and the number of pool players is seven. The next detail refers to uh, the golden shovel. I'm going to highlight that as well. And then the golden shovel, I'm looking at it, and I'm going to change the color of that highlight as well. I'm looking at it, and the golden shovel appears, well, the words are both capitalized. So that gives me the sense that the golden shovel is talking about a proper noun, specifically a place. Uh, so this is going to be our where in the poem. So the best way to think about this whole first stanza is to look at it as almost the exposition of a story. The exposition of a, of a story gives details on the, the who and the where of the, po uh, of the story. This gives us the, the who and the where of the poem. So this is the where, um, and it looks like the golden shovel is referring to a pool hall. A pool hall is a place where people go to play pool. Um, and that kind of gives us an idea of what's going on in this poem so far. So uh, first stanza tells us who the poem is about, tells us how many people um, it's referring to, and it tells us where uh, it's being located. Uh, now that we've got an idea of where the poem is and who's involved in it, the, the remainder of the poem is really giving us information about these pool players. Uh, so let, let's reread the remainder of the poem really quickly. It says, we real cool, we left school, we lurk late, we strike straight, we sing sin, we fin gin, we jazz june, and we die soon. Now that last few lines 
is I'm going to I'm going to highlight that right now because that's actually really important. We die soon because that gives us an idea of really how our poem ends up and what happens to the people at the end of the poem. Um, it also gives us an idea of their age. When we talk about dying soon, it's really referring to dying early in life. So that kind of tells us that the people that we're, we're hearing about, these seven pool players, are young people. These are not people who are adults. And that's pretty important because pool halls are places that uh, generally should have adults in them. Um, there are all sorts of things going on inside of a pool hall that are not appropriate for young people. Uh, so it's not a place that a young person should be. Um, and as we look at, look back at the, the middle part of the poem, we see some of the things that, that these people are doing that they probably shouldn't do. Uh, we start off with the words, we real cool. And I'm not going to highlight that, but I'm going to underline it we real cool now the first thing you might notice is that that's not a proper sentence we real cool so that automatically gives us an idea of the types of people um, that are in this poem now there's two things to keep in mind about them uh, the first thing is that uh, based on the context of the poem and and what we know about Gwendolyn Brooks it's probably referring to African Americans who um, speak often uh, in what's called dialect um, so sometimes the poem, uh, it, sometimes the speech of an African American may omit important words, uh, like the verb that's not in the sentence, which it should really say we are real cool. So it gives us an idea that the people in this poem, uh, first off, are, are probably African American, but it also tells us that these people are not speaking properly. Um, and it tells us in the next line why it is that this, this, these people may not be speaking properly. It says we left school. Now when we talk about leaving school, we're not talking about maybe uh, leaving school at the end of the day or or, or not even maybe um, drop not even leaving school and, and, and skipping school it kind of feels more like it's talking about someone who is dropping out of school uh, either way you look at it it's somebody who's involved in in school and probably uh, not serious about it and again these are young people so school should be important and serious to them um, but it's not so I'm gonna I'm gonna add a note here and I'm going to say it's not 100% clear whether we're talking about dropping out or whether we're talking about skipping school. So I'm going to put both. Skipping school slash dropping out. Either way you look at it, it's it's not exactly a great decision to make as a young person, um, uh, particularly if you're doing it to do something like play pool. So we left school not a good decision to be made by these people um, then we look at some of the other decisions that they make we lurk late the word lurk if you don't know uh, is a word um, meaning and in fact you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna circle that word I'm gonna circle that word uh, the word lurk means to, to hang out and it's a word with a negative connotation lurking is the kind of thing that someone does when they're doing something wrong something like someone like a criminal might lurk outside of a home or in a place where they shouldn't be so these people are, are kind of hanging out maybe someplace that they maybe shouldn't so I'm gonna make sure I indicate what it means to lurk hanging out and it tells us what time they're hanging out. They're hanging out late. So again, these are young people who are hanging out probably at a time that they shouldn't be doing things that they should not be doing, like playing pool in a pool hall, which is a place that's that's, that's essentially designed for older people, not for younger people. Um, so they're lurking late, and you can think about all the bad things that happen uh, when a young person is is hanging out um, after hours in, in a in a kind of a seedy place like like a a a pool hall or a bar um, says we strike straight and that that probably refers to the act of playing pool which hey these are people who play pool and apparently they're very good uh, because they they strike straight but what about some of the other things that they do um, we sing sin the word sin is a word um, uh, a religious word but it generally means an evil act or an act that someone uh, shouldn't perform so these are people who are doing, and you can think about all the, the types of things that people do when they're someplace where they're not supposed to be and the things that, that young people should not be involved in. And we don't know for sure what it is that they're doing, but the author is kind of telling us mm, it's probably something that's not very positive. Um, and then it goes a little bit further and says we thin gin. Gin, if you don't know, is an alcohol. It's a type of alcohol. And if we're talking about young people, uh, gin is something that a young person probably should not 
be involved with. Um, it's an alcohol, and it's not only d dangerous, but it's illegal. Um, as we go a little further, it says we jazz June. Jazz refers to a type of music. If you're familiar with the jazz age in the 1920s, uh, you know that it was the music of, uh, of partying. But at, at, at different points in our history, jazz music was seen as a negative and something that young people probably should not be involved in, especially around the time that this poem was written, which is uh, around the, the late 1950s, early 1960s. Um, so even jazz is, in the way that it's used, is not a positive thing. So all of these things where we were talking about sin and gin and jazz, um, these are all what you might describe as bad ideas for a young person. These are, are bad things that they're doing. Um, so I'm going I'm gonna, uh, to write down, um, I'm going to write down bad decisions because it seems like that's what this poem is mostly about, making bad decisions, making, making bad choices as a young person and doing things that if you're, if you're not careful about will result in, in what we see at the end of the poem, which is these young people, uh, instead of living long, full lives, uh, kind of dying before their time, dying soon, rather, dying sooner rather than later. Uh, so when we look at what it is that this author seems to be talking about, or what, what it is that the speaker of the poem seems to be talking about, it's these young people who are, are out late, um, kind of having a good time, but not thinking about their future and not making good decisions. And the, the end result um, is that after all of this is done, they, they die soon, or at least sooner than they should. Um, so now that we have an idea of, of what the poem is trying to say, um, there are some questions that come after. Um, first, can we summarize the main idea of the poem? What's the poem talking about and, and what is the poem trying to say? Uh, the second question asks to identify theme. The theme of a poem is, is the, the message that the author is trying to teach us. So what message is the author trying to send? And how do we know? What evidence do we have from the poem to tell us that? Um, the next question has to do with making inferences, being able to uh, figure out something that the author did not state directly. Um, how do you think the author or the speaker of this poem feels about the people that he or she is observing? And I think the important thing to keep in mind is that the speaker of this poem is not one of the people in the poem. The speaker of the poem seems to be observing these people and has an opinion about uh, their decisions that they're making and, and how can you tell. And then the last thing uh, has to do with Comparing and contrasting this poem with the short story, The War of the Wall, by Tony K. Bambara, which we've read in class. Uh, so what are some of the similarities between the poem and the short story that we read, and what are some of the differences? So think back to the poem, and think back to the short story, and, and look at what the themes are that are being stated, and the types of people who inhabit uh, both of these pieces of literature. Uh, and you should then be able to answer all four of these questions uh, on the Do Now assignment for The War of the Wall.